Hi, I'm Shannon Dennis, an Omni crafter and designer from the Cleveland, Ohio area, and I've brought some really great tips and techniques that I hope will be helpful to you concerning top stitching. If we look over here at this cute little outfit I made for my son, um, top stitching is essentially just holding your seam in place. It can also be uh, used in a decorative way, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But along the sleeve here, you can see the two rows of top stitching. If you move down to the pocket, again, two rows across the top of the pocket that are top stitched. And then essentially, a pocket is top stitched onto your outfit when you're creating um, an outfit in this way. Over here, I have two laptop cases, and these will be free project downloads. To showcase top stitching in a more decorative way, you can use a heavier weight thread, which we'll talk about as well. You can use lightweight threads and contrasting colors. And you can also, if you look at the sample, use um, a heavy weight thread in a very contrasting way to really pop and give your, your project some personality, as well as a lighter weight thread along the outside of your um, laptop bag. That'll hold everything together. And in this project, it's actually one seam uh, top stitching and securing the, the bottom of the laptop bag. So let's get started in talking about top stitching. First, there's a couple of combinations that you want to be aware of. Just, in, just like in any project, whether you're garment sewing, quilting, home deck, no matter how you're applying top stitching, you're going to want to make sure you have the right thread, needle, and fabric combination. So we'll talk about the heavyweight thread first. Here we have a very heavy um, cotton thread used for top stitching. Traditionally, you're going to see this in home decor used on um, heavier weight fabrics like denim or an oil cloth or a duck cloth. Um, this is a really great thread for those types of fabrics because those fabrics generally have a lot of use on them. If you're thinking about jeans, you know, those, those seams get a lot of stress. So you want to make sure that you're using a heavy weight thread in that case. The combination that you want to use with a heavy thread is, of course, a heavy needle, a top stitching needle. Make sure it's at least a 90-14. You can see that size right down there on the, uh, on the needle case. At least a 90. I like to use usually a 110 or an 18 needle on mine. And top stitch needles are important to use as well. They have a little bit um, f uh, sharper point, a larger eye, and a, uh, a little bit wider shaft to the needle. And what that does is it allows the shaft will pierce the fabric, I'm sorry, the point will pierce the fabric, uh, the heavyweight fabric. The shaft makes the hole a little bit larger so the eye of the needle can carry that heavyweight thread through and make a perfect stitch. A lot of times uh, when you don't have the right thread and needle combinations, you'll see skip stitches or stitching that doesn't look straight. And I'll show you that in a little bit as well. If you're using a lighter weight fabric, or a sheer, um, such as a cotton, you're going to want to use just a regular all-purpose cotton thread. Um, make sure it's the same in the top and the bottom bobbin, and that is true for the heavyweight thread as well. Make sure that you're using a heavy in your bobbin. You can switch to a universal or an 80-12 needle when you're using your all-purpose threads. This is just a regular um, universal needle for any type of fabric, and this will make the hole a little bit smaller. Again, make sure you're using a lighter weight thread in your bobbin. And if we look here, I put these two um, beautiful threads right next to each other so you can see the um, density or the thickness of the thread. This is obviously our heavyweight um, fabric thread, and this is our all-purpose thread. So let's get started in showing you exactly how to top stitch. In combination with your needle and your thread, you're going to make sure that you change your stitch length. And what this does is um, lengthens your stitch, especially with your heavyweight threads, you're going to want to make sure that you change it to at least a 3.0 or a 3.5 stitch length. This will keep it um, from bulking up your fabrics, from having your stitching get lost. I'm going to use a home decor fabric here, and I'm just using the generic seam stitching um, foot on my fabric right now. Using markers within the foot are helpful um, along the seam line to get perfect top stitching. We're going to talk about some feet that will help you do that as well in just a minute. But let's go ahead and use the inside edge of your sewing foot. I have my needle in my center position and I've um, threaded my machine with a heavy in the top and in the bobbin. Thank you. 
And you can see by following the edge of the seam on the inside edge of the foot, it allows your eyes not to get tired and watch the needle go up and down and be all nervous about it. You can just go very easily and get perfect top stitching. And by using the longer stitch length, my stitch isn't getting lost. I've used the correct top stitching needle. So you can see my stitching is nice and straight. Um, there's no zigzagging in the stitches. And my hole is all uh, concealed by the weight of the thread. Another thing that you'll see, if you use the wrong size needle for your thread, and we may be able to catch it here. I did this, it's a perfect combination. Um, I have my lightweight thread with my lightweight fabric. I've also used the same in the top and the bobbin, and I've lengthened my stitch length. So everything seems perfect, except for if you look at the stitching, you're gonna notice there's holes next to each one of those stitching. You can see where the needle pierced the fabric, and that's because you didn't, I didn't switch back to a universal needle. So if you see that coming up in your top stitching, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go back and change to a universal needle for your lightweight fabrics, and that will clear that up and make it just perfect. Also, I have an example of um, while this looks like great top stitching, perfect distance away from the seam, one quarter of an inch, my stitch length is very small, so my stitching gets lost, and I used lightweight thread instead of heavyweight thread. So that's what this top stitching would look like. This isn't a bad top stitching if you're going to be actually making a seam like I did on the laptop bag here. I didn't want that to show up very much, um, so I I chose to uh, top stitch in that manner, but generally speaking, you want it to you want to lengthen your stitch, like in this sample. This is also a great example of using high contrast fabric and thread, which is really fun for decorating um, both garment, craft, home decor projects, and really making that um, that pop. I've used the correct needle, correct thread and top and bobbin, and um, so that's a perfect example of a top stitching sample. Now, a lot of times in your sewing, you're going to come across um, times where you're going to go over multiple seams. So I want to cover that when you're top stitching. This can be a little bit cumbersome. So we'll put the seam and we're going to set up our machine exactly how we did for um, regular top stitching. Nothing's changed. We have our stitch length at a 3.5 and we're going to start sewing here. And right as we come to that seam where the seams have intersected here, there on this particular machine, there's a little um, button that you can push on the foot. And that raises the foot to the correct level so that you're just sailing over the fabric and it unlocks magically once you pass that seam. Now on other machines, you may have what's called um, a seam jumper. It's a little L-shaped gray piece that you stick in the front of your machine and then the back as you're gliding over the seams. But this machine's great, just a little um, press-in button on the side there and we can beautifully sail over all of those layers of fabric. So this would be great for your denim and um, any pants sewing or heavy decor home deck projects that you're doing. Again, look at not even a skip stitch, just beautiful. Now, to show the next part, I'd like to show you how to do the double stitching that I did on my son's Easter outfit along the sleeves and along the top of the pocket. So I'm going to take off the foot of this machine. Very easy snap off. And I'm going to come over here and talk about some accessory feet that you can use to help with your top stitching. Um, these look like normal sewing machine feet, which they are. This one is called a quarter inch piecing foot, normally used in quilting. It's one quarter of an inch away from the flange to the needle and uh, generally is run along two pieces of fabric to piece them together for quilting. We're gonna use it for top stitching though. Hopefully we can catch that flange right on the edge of the seam, our needle in a center needle straight stitch position, and you're going to stitch using that flange as a guide. So I'm gonna snap on this edge stitching foot, which is gonna have the flange ride right along that seam, but gives me some um, variation of where I can place the needle. I'm gonna move my needle position.
and this is so much easier than using your eye or the inside of the foot as a guide for perfect top stitching. There you go. I hope you have some great tips to help you top stitch better and enjoy your projects.